Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, I want to show you how to connect your iPad to a TV. This works whether you're trying to watch a YouTube video at home or do a presentation at work and school. Not only are we going to show you how to connect it, what cables and adapters to use, but we're also going to walk through each of the programs like an internet browser, YouTube, Keynote, and PowerPoint to show you the different tips and tricks to get the displays showing what you want in the correct resolution and whether or not you want notes or anything like that or you want a second display or if you just want them mirrored. We're going to walk through each one of those. Kettner Creative is an audio-visual company located in Vancouver, BC. We set up TVs and rent iPads and all that for events. We probably do this five or six times a day, setting up iPads and TVs. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. We have all kinds of videos for anything AV related. And if you want to see something that you don't see in the video list, please comment below and we will make that video for you as well. Great, so what do you need to get started to hook your iPad to a 60 inch TV like we have here? It works with any size TV as long as it has the HDMI input. HDMI has been on most TVs for several decades, so uh, we're not going to show you the VGA way. The VGA way is old, everybody's on HDMI now, so we're just going to show you that. So you need a TV, uh, power, you need an HDMI cable. Here we have a 25 foot HDMI cable. Don't get too hung up on high end versus low end. Just go buy the Amazon Basics HDMI cable that comes in the length that you need. Um, they'll all work for your iPad, no problem there. And a remote. The last thing we recommend is the official from Apple lightning to HDMI adapter. Uh, we recommend that you get the official one. Uh, we've had bad experiences with some third party ones. Uh, it's a couple extra bucks to buy the Apple one, but it's worth it. It's more consistent and more reliable. Uh, oftentimes when you're doing a presentation and that type of thing, you have enough stress as it is. Just pay the extra couple bucks, give you that confidence. There's nothing worse than rolling into a presentation or some formal event. And before you even get to the part that you're actually concerned about, which is presenting your content, you're already bogged down with tech difficulties. And tech isn't supposed to be a distraction for you. It's supposed to enhance your presentation. So I recommend pay the extra couple bucks, get the peace of mind and the confidence with the proper adapter. Don't cheap out there. Okay, great. So what are we going to do first? First, we need to plug in the power for the TV. So here's the power cable from the back of the TV. We'll plug it in. If you're having problems after following all the steps, the first thing that we recommend is that you try turning the TV and the iPad off, waiting a couple seconds, and then turn them back on again. Uh, a lot of the problems will be resolved just by rebooting it, as long as you follow the steps correctly. Uh, with TVs, they seem less temperamental than uh, projectors with their inputs, so there's no order of operations here. Just turn the TV on. We're going to plug the HDMI into input one, uh, depending on your TV. Uh, you can plug it into whatever input you want. Uh, it, does, it shouldn't make a difference at all unless you have a bad input. If you're having problems connecting uh, after following all the steps and after turning everything on and off again, I would try another input on the TV. That might be what uh, your problem is. So we'll plug the HDMI cable into the back of the TV. We plugged in input one here. Now we'll plug it into the Apple adapter, the lightning to H, uh, HDMI, and then we'll plug it into the iPad itself. Now we should see it load up here. Sometimes it just takes a couple seconds to initialize, and there we go. So here we have an internet browser, and it's showing exactly what we have on the iPad. If that's not working for you, you'll need to use your uh, remote control for your TV or the buttons on the back and hit input and make sure that you selected the same input that you have uh, plugged your cable in. Obviously, if you plug into HDMI, uh, HDMI 1, you need to select HDMI 1 on your input list uh, to get the image showing up. Now, a couple things here. You can see on the iPad itself, it is full screen. It's going edge to edge on the screen. On the TV, there's this little padding uh, here. That's just because the shape of the iPad screen is different. The TV is a wider display, um, but you don't have to worry about that too much. It'll just mirror what you're doing. Now, if you're watching a video or whatever, you would rather it be optimized for the TV, right? You'd rather it fill that 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Uh, so the good thing is the iPad does that for you. 
So if we open up YouTube here, and we just play whatever video uh, comes up first. So you can see here that the volume comes out of the iPad uh, to the TV, so you can control the volume with your TV. The other thing that you're going to notice here is that it sends your video full screen to the TV and it leaves you with the second display. So now you can use the second display to browse other videos, which is quite handy. Uh, most people prefer that experience if you're showing things on YouTube. Now if we flip over to PowerPoint, we can see here, here's our test slide that we put together. So we, we just opened up a presentation that say we made ahead of time. If you go to slideshow at the top, you could say from current and that will mirror. Now this TV will do exactly what the iPad is doing. So it'll go slide to slide. We only have one slide. Uh, if you want to exit out, just keep swiping right. Now, some presenters prefer to have their notes showing. So how can we do that? We can hit presenter view here, right at the top. And now we get presenter view. So what presenter view does is it shows the current slide and it shows all the next slides underneath, plus your notes. Uh, a lot of presenters prefer that because then they can look down at their notes while they're holding their iPad and it shows the main slide without their notes on the screen behind them. This is really great for teachers. Maybe you're presenting at a desk or something like that, a table, and you get to see your notes and your students get to see the TV. It's also great for office environments with like a boardroom type setting. You might not have a laptop, you might just be using an iPad. So we'll do the same thing on Keynote. So we open up Keynote here, we'll select our test presentation that we just made, and here we go. We have uh, so we can launch it by just using the play button in the top right. And there we have it. So by default, uh, Keynote will give you presenter notes. So here we have the main slide behind us. And here we have a current slide. It shows the next slide and the notes. If we don't like that view, there is a button up in the top right that has two little screens on it. And you get to select what you want. So say you want to show the current slide. There it is. Or if you just want to show the next slide, current and next, or notes only, uh, all of those are options uh, for you. So you can customize that however you want. We'll probably do a separate video just on like external displays on PowerPoint and Keynote just to make sure that all your presentations are uh, looking the way you want. But that's how I would do it with an iPad. So there you have it. Everything's working great. The two things to notice, um, the volume will come out of your TV, so you have full control using your TV remote, and the resolution of the TV will auto-configure coming from the iPad and whatever it thinks works best. For PowerPoint presentations and keynotes and videos, it'll give the TV the full 16 by 9. If you're just browsing the web, it's going to do its best to mirror what you're doing. So it's going to crop the sides just so you're seeing the exact same thing as that because that's the experience that most people would prefer. If you have any questions about how to connect an iPad to a TV, please leave it in the comment section below. Uh, we'll make a follow-up video to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, if you're interested in the event industry and what we do, uh, or if you're just an AV geek, please like and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching.